Hi, and welcome to another video tutorial about C Sharp using Visual Studio Express 2010. In this video tutorial, we're going to talk about methods. So, what are methods? Let's say you have a piece of code that contains a lot of information about executing a lot of things or calculating values, and you have to repeat these lines of codes all the time, then it's much more useful to put all these lines inside a method. That means you only have to call one line, or a name in this case of the name of the method, and then all these lines are being executed. And that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. So I've already set up a basic program called Program 11, and I'm going to go to Program 11, I press my right mouse button, click on Add, and then I'm going to go to Class, and I'm going to make the animal class. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so we are going to make this class public and we're going to add two variables. One of them is a string called name because I want my animal to have a name and I'm just going to call it animal by default. I'm also going to give it an integer legs because we want to say how many legs our animal has and this is our current class, okay? So we're going to the program.cs, the uh, main program, and we're going to make this animal. And I'm going to call it dog is new animal, followed by the parenthesis and the semicolon. And then what I want to do is I want to print out the name of our dog or well, name of our animal and I want to automatically print out the number of legs that it has of course our dog at the moment has a wrong name for instance dog um, now at the moment our dog has this default name called animal and it has zero legs so we need to do something about that so there are two things that we can do here or a couple of things that we actually can do First, what I want to do is make a method that prints out the information. And when you want to make a method that simply executes something that, for instance, prints a page or opens a file, then you create a method called void. So we always start with void. And we're going to make it public because we need to access it from outside of this class. The uh, public keyword is being explained in a following tutorial, but for now this will do. And after void, we type in the name of our method, and we're going to call it print animal info, followed by the parenthesis. And inside the code block that belongs to this method, we can well we can do stuff. For instance, console right line, and then we're going to print the name of our animal. I am an, or a dog in this case, I am a dog, which is stored in name, and because name is already a string, we do not have to add the dot to string function. But what I do want to say here, and I have this many legs, I have legs to string okay so I'll repeat this so first off we're gonna say I am a follow then we need to use the uh, the plus character followed by the variable called name and then it automatically fills in the name of our animal and if we do not change this variable, then it's going to fill in I am an animal. Well, that's actually not correct, the spelling, but you know what I mean. And then it's going to follow, it's being followed by this line here, plus the legs are being printed out. And of course, we need to, we mustn't forget the semicolon. Okay, so let's see what happens when we do that. We go back to the program, and when we say dog, followed by a dot, and here we have this cool function here, print animal info. And of course I need to add the console.read line. Okay. And when we press run, 
when we start debugging, then it's going to print out this information. I am a or an animal and I have zero legs. Well, that's great. So this demonstrates the first kind of method that we can use in C-sharp called the void methods because they do not they they execute something they do something for you and we also have methods that return something and they work as follows for instance we want to return the amount of legs that our uh, animal has so we're going to say public then instead of void we're going to use the data type that we want our function to return and in this case we want to return the amount of legs which is an integer and I'm gonna say get legs and I have to use the return keyword and when you make a method that's not a void then you always have to use the the return keyword and I'm gonna say return legs I'm going to copy this line just real quick. I'm going to put that right underneath the doc print animal info. And I just want to show you what this does. So I'm going to say doc dot, and this time I'm going to say get legs, followed by two string. So what is this doing? It's going to say doc, this object that we've just made, get legs which returns a value and that value we've got well it also needs to be converted to a string otherwise we can't print it on the console and here you can see we have it set to zero okay now you know the two kinds of methods that you can create but there's a lot more to it when using methods methods can be used with parameters I'm gonna see how that works Let's say we want to set the amount of legs. You know what? First off, we want to set the amount of legs and we want to set the name. We're going to say public void. I'm going to set, say, set name and legs. And that comes a good part. We just enter that to another line. Okay. We want to keep it nice and clean. And then followed, we have if you want to make an extra parameter option, and there can be as many parameters as you want, first you need to type the data type, and we first want to set the name. So we're going to say string name. And we want to add another parameter, and we can do that by using a comma. And we want to say we want to set the legs. So we're going to say legs. Um, now you might wonder what happens inside this class. I mean, if I call the variable legs here, which one is being called? Is it this one inside the parameter, or is it the one that's already inside the class? Now, to avoid problems here, we use the this, this keyword, and the this keyword refers to the actual class object itself. So that means that when we're calling this, we're actually saying animal dot and then if we type in here legs then we're referring to this variable and we, Visual Studio actually highlights the word when we select it and that's great because now we know that this dot legs is being called and then we want to store the legs variable that we pass along in our method and if you do not follow this right now it's, well, it doesn't really matter you will get into it when you try it a couple of times but Besides the legs, we also want to set the name. So this name is name variable that we pass along. So this variable here. So now we've set a new name and we've set the amount of legs. So let's go back to our main program. And then before the print animal info, we're going to say doc dot set name and legs. And then when we type the first opening parenthesis, you can see here that it says string name and followed by integer legs. So here we can add our parameters. And this time you do not need to specify a data type. You just have to enter which value is being passed along. So we're going to say dog. 
and for the integers, well a dog normally has four legs unless it had an injury. Okay, and then we're going to run this program. And there we go, I'm a dog and I have four legs and our function get legs is returning also a value of four. Okay, and there's one extra thing that I need to teach you here. <clears throat> Now let's say that for some kind of reason we want to use this function again. For instance, we want to say call a function called set name and legs, but this time uh, we do not want to give along or pass along the name. That's perfectly fine. For instance, we do not want to pass along the name, we just want to set the legs, but we want to call the method the same way and this is being allowed because the amount of parameters is different than this method and this way we're programming right now is called method overloading and so there are two ways of uh, method overloading the first thing is uh, using a different amount of parameters inside the parentheses of your method or you have to change the data type for instance, I can still use these, but if I would change the integer to a float, then this method would also be valid. And this is called method overloading. It's just a little extra. And that concludes this video tutorial.